Chapter 769, The One Who Is Asleep The Dark Magus's allies, as they were referred to, were interested to see what this Zahn character had. They somewhat already knew Anna's strength, and if she was following his orders like he was some type of leader, they expected him to be strong. What they didn't expect was for him to be so strong. Although they didn't see much in terms of Zahn fighting against Olag, they had seen enough to have an idea of his strength. Even though there was no chi emitted, his movements were just as fast as Merkel and Ray's when the two of them were on the field. And Ray's had been using magic to boost his speed as well. Then, there was his raw, pure strength along with the blast. Who is that man? Dame questioned. I know how strong Olag is. Even if that was a surprise attack, he should have been ready. Don't you think we have other things to worry about? Froma asked. Someone who they think is on our side just killed one of the top leaders. The Bonham Society members present were acting fast. They turned to look at Zahn, their bodies changing and transforming, ready to attack Zahn at a moment's notice. Now Raze's group needed to decide whether or not they would be helping him in this situation. It was hard for them, as they didn't even know who this person was. Nobody touch him, a loud voice shouted. Metal was clanking and screeching as Oleg pulled his own body out. Strange black liquid was seen covering his body, covering where his arms were, and then when the liquid disappeared, Oleg's body was as good as new, minus the clothes that he had been wearing. Window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag dot push, unit 648cc56 to 33 to 2 ID PF4630-1. These are our guests, and I was the one that asked him to fight. All of you fools acting like that are making me look like an idiot. Did you really think I would die from something like that? Olag claimed. Despite what had happened to him, Olag walked across the arena floor until he was back within striking distance from Zahn. He was just slightly shorter than him and looked up to the man. That was pretty brave of you to do something like that in a base where next to no one is your friend. I can respect that, Olag said with a smile. However, if it was anyone but me, they would have ended up splattered on that wall with two of their arms missing, which I'm not too happy about myself. Zahn looked at Olag for a while, examining every little facial expression he had. I knew about your powers. I was confident that my attacks wouldn't kill you, which was why I performed adequately enough for you, so I wouldn't have to waste my time further. As stated before, if you wish for me to use my full strength, then the only way is to wake up the one that's asleep. Olag gave a puff and then waved his arm, signaling for Zahn to go back to the others. The one who was asleep rung in his head. It was clear Zahn thought a lot about a certain individual. All right, I think I've had enough personally for the day. Phantom, come here. Olag shouted. Another member of the Bonham Society stepped forward, walking into the center, and then Olag looked to all of those lined up in front of him and pointed to one person in particular. You, you look a bit sheepish. Why don't you come forward and show what you got? As for the person whom Olag had pointed toward, it was Simeon. Me. Is he saying I look the weakest out of everyone? Simeon placed his hand on his forehead and was just shaking it. Damn it. I can see the grin on that damned ball-loving guy's face already. Turning his head to take a peek at Liam, he could already see a smile. All right, Simeon said, coming forward. There's no reason to test us. Let's say I am the weakest out of all these guys here, but I guarantee you one thing, I will not fall to any hit. Ah, then Phantom here will be perfect for you, Olag said as he walked off and Phantom's body started to change. His muscles were bulging, and he was growing bigger in size, while his skin was turning a dark blue. His size was now three times that of a regular human, and it looked like a pure mass of muscle. He said you won't fall, right? So show me, Olag said. Phantom cocked up his fist and threw it out right towards Simeon. Many of those wanted to flinch in the arena, but at that point, Simeon stood firm. He gathered his key and hardened his body as the ring around his ear activated. The moment the hybrid phantom's fist made contact, hitting the forehead of Simeon, a cracking noise could be heard. The strength of the hit was strong, and that was the downfall of phantom. His bones were seen ripping through his arm as the shockwave had been sent back to him. Ah! Phantom said as he grabbed onto his arm. 
What in the world is going on with these people? I picked him because he looked like a student, Olag said to himself. Why are they all so strong? As I said, there's no need to test us. We've been through a lot, and we've risked our lives more than once. So to risk it again is nothing, Simeon declared. He looked at Richter and Mata, who activated their chi. He was surprised to see that one was a middle-stage warrior of all things. The others looked confident, being students, and showed no hesitation or fear. There were then the students that were by Kronker, who quickly displayed their fast footwork and arts of assassination they had learned. I hope that we don't have to take part in this display, Alba said, being part of the Crimson Crane and all. And I would think you would know who I am as well, Reyna added. Seeing all these people confident, Oleg wasn't wondering how these people were so strong or how they gathered, but why they had all gathered around a single individual. The student who's asleep, just who is he, and how strong is he for them to all rally behind him, Oleg thought. Chapter 770, Take Over the Dark Faction After the two displays of strength and a bit of confident showmanship from the rest of the group, Olag decided there was no reason to test any more of them. If a random person who looked like a freak in his eyes and a puny student were this strong, then there was no need to see the rest. He was disappointed, though a grin remained on his face throughout the day. A change was coming, he could feel it and the Bonham Society would be at the start of it, something they had been trying to achieve for years was finally coming true. Several members of the Bonham Society had come out, and they had been formed into different squads of ten. They had used the training room to gather as it was the largest room they had. Then Dark Magus's allies were also split among the groups. Finally, Amir came out, looking at everyone set up nicely. I knew it would be easy for you to win Olag over, I thought it was better that you guys just got it over and done with, and in the meantime, I have been doing something else. Amir was holding a bunch of scrolls underneath his arm. He started to call over members from each of the groups that had lined up and handed them a scroll each. Eventually, all of them were taken away. I have been compiling all of the information of our society's network, everything that we have to do with the Dark Faction and their clans over the years, Amir announced. What I have handed out is the target that each of your groups must head to. As I said before, we are going to do this quick and fast. The Dark Faction will be taken over, each clan under the control of us all at once. They won't see it coming, and they won't have time to communicate with others to form a plan. Window.pubfuturetag when a pub future tag. Window pub future tag dot push unit. 648664B273F9C2E2, ID PF4646-1. The Dark Faction is already in disarray after what has occurred with Merkel and those he brought, so we need to take advantage of it. Simeon looked at the scroll handed to his group. They were to head to the Moonshield clan, with him and his group being Bargo, the vice leader of the Moonshield clan. Admittedly, he was a bit confused as to why he was heading to this clan and working with Bargo rather than with Safa and Liam, who had been with him for a long time. I will tell you the reasoning behind my choices, Amir said. In all of these clans, there are several things that we can gain. Firstly is their knowledge. These clans have been part of the Dark Faction for a long time and have perfected their techniques. Learning their information their powers, getting your hands on what they have, I believe will be able to help you all progress on your journey. On top of that, many of the clans have ancient artifacts. Some they have gathered from other dimensions, others that have been handed down from generation to generation. Now is not the time for them to be just hung up as ornaments or for the power to be kept within the clan for fear that it might disappear one day. I want you to take over the clans, and in turn, take these artifacts for yourselves. The information we have on these artifacts, from my research, I have lined them up to suit your needs to help you grow even stronger. Once we have control of it all, we won't stop there. We will freely use the resources they have gathered and share them amongst each other. I don't plan to continue to make the clan stronger or to help out the Bonham Society, but instead, I have decided to bet everything on you. The Bonham Society has existed for many years, and we have failed at our task. 
yet you have all grown so fast and so strong, and I think you all need to continue on that trajectory. I will be putting all the resources into making all of you the core strength of the Dark Faction. Some of the Bonham Society members looked at each other. They didn't know this was what Amir was planning. They had no idea. They knew they were to help the strangers that had come, but they thought this was a bit much. However, Olag stood there in support of Amir, and as long as those two seemed to be on board with the idea, the Bonham Society believed this would be best for them all. I want you all to understand, with what has happened out there, there is now a high chance of two things. The Light Faction coming and attacking, and Alter coming to get rid of us all. In that case, we need to make the faction as strong as possible, and I am betting on these people who managed to get rid of the old Dark Faction. If they can do that, then surely they can protect us from the Light Faction and Alter. The Bonham Society members started to cheer and bowed their heads to those part of Ray's group. It was strange. Many of them felt like they had just gained a small army to use at their disposal. Some of them were worried about the clans they would have to face alone, such as Mata. Even though two of the Flowing Force clan's strongest had been defeated, there were still many strong members, such as his brother, and he was unsure what the result would be. All of you head off. If my guess is right, then in a week's time, Rays will be awake. Have the Dark Faction ready for him, Amir announced. Everyone had set off to the corners of the Dark Faction, and soon five days had gone past. Two people were placed in the same room, waiting for them to wake up. They were sitting side by side, and soon one had opened their eyes, lifting up their body off the table. Where am I? Mantis said, touching his face, and when he looked to his side, he could see Rays there. Chapter 771 Wake Up Dark Mage The Bonham Society was a safe place. No one other than its members knew about its whereabouts, and they managed to keep it hidden from the Dark Faction Ella's altar for many years. It was why they were so confident in leaving both Mantis and Ray's alone in the same room. After all, the entire group were part of Ray's allies. They would send people to check on the two regularly to see if they were awake or not. The issue was, with no signs of either waking, the Bonham Society members were slacking, doing fewer checks, and even just peeping their heads through the door to see if there were any signs of new life. That was when Mantis had finally woken up, his eyes wide open, and placed both hands at the side of his head. His heart was racing. What, what happened? My body, I turned into... I was a beast, Mantis said to himself. The martial arts tournament, it was going on, and then, then, then what happened? Mantis was unable to recall any memories past the match he had. What was the outcome of it, and who was the winner? Most importantly, why was he even in the place where he was currently? I don't recognize anything. I'm not back at the clan. Did the light faction capture me, or was it the dark faction? Looking to his right, there was a curtain hanging. He could see a light source above, allowing him to see a figure lying on a table next to him. Pulling it back, he was surprised to see what his eyes were looking at. Window dot pub future tag equals window pub future tag window dot pub future tag unit six four eight c three c three c five zero three b two seven three f nine c two e two. Once, that's that's rays from the crimson crane. He was in the tournament with me. Why is he passed out as well and on the table? Was he the one that brought me here? Mantis could make no sense of what had occurred. He could make no sense of how things came to be the way they were, but as he thought about it more, why would the person who had taken him captive also take Rays along with him? We're both from the demonic faction. I doubt he has anything to do with it, Mantis thought as he got down from his table and started to walk closer to Rays. As he looked at him, he remembered everything he saw Rays do at the tournament. He's so strong. I was the highest ranking student at the academy, and then he came out of nowhere. Mantis started to look at Ray's throat, seeing what a vulnerable state he currently was in, just lying there. If he didn't exist, then I would still be the number one ranking student, Mantis thought as he moved in closer, his hands drawing closer to Ray's. As they did, he could feel something, a tingle going all over his body. It was as if they were passing through a force field. The hairs on his forearms were starting to stand up. 
The further he pushed his hands forward, the more he had this strange feeling hanging over him. He felt like there was a knife being pressed up against his throat. Hey, Mantis said as he grabbed onto Raze's arm. Wake up, wake up, something is going on here. Mantis proceeded to shake Raze's arm and then felt slight movement. Immediately as he did, he pulled away, no longer touching Ray's. Slowly, he could see the body start to move, and then Ray's eyes opened up. Ray's stayed there lying on the table, staring at the ceiling for a moment. He looked at its metallic shape, the material quite strange, he had rarely seen it in the world of Pagna. Am I back in Alterian? Did I die again? Ray's said as he lifted his body. Die again? He heard a voice repeat to his side. Turning his head, Ray's looked at the student, seeing his bare chest with a claw mark scratched right across it. I mean, it feels like I've been brought back to life, Ray's replied. He recognized the student, the one known as Mantis, who had the nickname of the Black Tiger. An extremely talented student, Ray's thought, especially when it came to Pogna-like skills. Before, he was extremely confident and cocky, but when Ray's looked at him now, it didn't feel that way. The truth was, Mantis, until a moment to ag, Oh, still felt like his throat was ready to be cut at any moment. Only when Ray's woke up had that feeling gone. Still shocked by it, he hadn't had time to get his demeanor back. Where are we? Ray's asked as he got off the table. His head was a little sore, and he still felt slightly lightheaded. He wobbled for a moment and then placed his hand on the back of the table to keep himself standing. Ray's himself started to think about what had occurred. He remembered the last moments of the divine being taking over his body, facing off against Merkel, and finally looking at Safa with hopes that she would use the Lux sword on him to help him recover. I guess I didn't pass, but I would have thought we would have either been placed somewhere in the demonic faction or the dark faction, Reyes said. There is also a chance that we were caught. This whole place is made of a type of iron, Mantis said. The two of them walked out from their rooms and could see the vast size of the location they were in. The iron used was incredibly thick, either designed to keep people in or keep people out. If I were to take a guess, we must have been captured by the light faction, Mantis claimed. In Ray's mind, that was most likely. Everyone was severely injured and it took them a long time to deal with Merkel. With the number of artifacts they had, it was the most likely. Well, if we're captured, I guess we have no choice but to break out of this place. Chapter 772 A breakout mantis would have never expected this, that he would be working side by side with Rays in trying to break out of a facility they were captured in by the Light Faction. He could see Rays doing something as he placed both of his hands on the ground. I just had a thought, Mantis said. Why did they just capture us and not the others? And what's even happened to the others? Ray's had already thought about this, considering a large number of different things. He was hoping they had all managed to escape, leaving behind the two people that weren't able to fend for themselves. As for a reason why they might still be alive, both Mantis and Ray's had shown extraordinary abilities. Mantis with his body being partly a beast and a hybrid, and then there was Ray's and his magic. My magic and chi, it's all returned, even if my head still isn't a hundred percent in the right place. Ray's thought. But the light faction, taking me to their center, if this is their facility, then it might be a chance to learn something. After a short while, Ray's lifted his hands off the ground. I can't sense any other magic, Ray's said, not even bothering to hide his words anymore in front of Mantis. Which means that Safa isn't here. Safa, Mantis replied back somewhat remembering that was the name of one of the contestants. It also means I can rule out that it was Alter that captured us, Ray's continued. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag. Window pub future tag push unit 6488C364 through 23F9C22 PF-4630-1. Alter? Mantis repeated again, hearing phrases he didn't understand. What I do know, though, is there are a lot of people out there and I'm telling you now, I don't mind you coming with me, but I'm not going to look after you, Ray's stated. Ha, like I needed any help from you, Mantis replied as he watched Ray's heading to the solid metal door. Ray's placed one hand on the metal door, and it started to freeze over. After that, he gathered Chi in his fist and threw out a punch. 
As it hit the door, it smashed it into pieces that went flying into the hallway. How are you even able to do these things? Mantis said out loud when he wanted to say it in his head, and it was the same as the next line that came out of his mouth. It's not fair. You're right, Raze said, stepping into the hallway. If it will give you some peace, it's because I'm from another world. Mantis didn't know what to do apart from just laugh at the situation. Raze started to make his way through the tunnels, hoping that he would eventually come across something that would be of use to him. As they continued to rush through, they could see a person up ahead walking through. Before Raze could even act, he saw something come right past him. Mantis had leapt through the air at great speed and grabbed onto the other person's face, slamming it onto the floor, knocking the man out, or possibly even killing him. We're both breaking out of this place, and immediately I might need your help, so I can't just leave it all to you, Mantis said. Raze nodded. He appreciated someone like this. Someone that didn't just come along for the free ride. Even if they felt like they were weaker, they still tried to help in their own way. The two of them continued to run, and Mantis couldn't help but look at his own hand and think about what had just occurred. I was only meaning to run, but then my whole body leapt across the room, and the power I could feel. I didn't even put much chi into my attacks. My whole body, it feels like it's changed, like it's evolved. Mantis thought. Up ahead, just before they turned a corner, Raze placed both hands on the ground, and an ice trail appeared, freezing the man completely around the corner, and the two of them continued to move. Hey, aren't you going to finish them off? Mantis asked. It will only slow us down. I plan to cause a big mess in this place anyway. Usually, if there is something to hide in the facility, then it's the place with the most people. So we need to save our strength, H for that. Come on, let's go, Ray said as he continued through the hallways, unknown to him, heading for the training center, where there were large groups of hybrids practicing. While in the hallways, other members of the Bonham Society were just making their way when they spotted the man passed out on the floor. The member quickly rushed over, turning him around to see his face bloody and broken from being slammed onto the floor. What is this? Who would just attack someone like this? The member said, calling Phantom over. I just got a report that another one of our men was attacked as well, Phantom said. It looks like someone's infiltrated the base. We need to inform everyone immediately of what's happening. The Bonham Society members were now on high alert, sure that an intruder had come into their base, and the information had eventually got passed to Oleg, who was playing cards with a bunch of other members in one of the break rooms. For fuck's sake, why does this crap always have to happen when it's just me here? Oleg said, standing up and starting to bark orders at the others. I can't believe this type of stuff always seems to happen when Amir has to be away, Oleg thought to himself. He started to look at the information and listen to the new reports that were coming in on a little square device by his side. It had a little tuner used and the voices of the others would come into him. Hey, what's this? Oleg said with a smile. From the sounds of it, they're heading right for the training room. Let's give these guys a nice little surprise, yeah. Everyone, let's go. Chapter 773 Echoes of Avarice Warning, Filler Chapter In the heart of the netherworld, where shadows danced and whispers echoed, there existed tales of demons with tragic pasts. Avaris, the warlord of greed, was no exception. His tale was one of sorrow, longing, and the relentless pursuit of something beyond his reach. Avaris, in his childhood, was not the embodiment of greed that the netherworld knew him as today. He was once an innocent demon boy, born into a modest demon family that dwelled on the outskirts of the corrupted realm. His parents, though not wealthy, showered him with love and care, nurturing the soul within him. However, fate can be a cruel force, and Avaris's idyllic childhood took a tragic turn when a calamity befell his family. The corrupting forces of the netherworld claimed his parents, leaving Avaris an orphan with a void in his heart that no amount of wealth could fill. Alone and vulnerable, Avaris wandered through the desolate landscapes of the netherworld, aching for the warmth and comfort that his family once provided. Hunger gnawed at his belly, and the harsh reality of survival amidst the realm had pushed him to the brink. 
Long before Obsidian X's influence entered his life, Avaris was a demon grappling with the innate seeds of greed within himself. Avaris, as a child, exhibited a curiosity for the world around him, fueled by an innocent desire to understand and experience the pleasures that life in the netherworld had to offer. However, within the confines of Avaris's own heart, an insatiable hunger was beginning to stir. It wasn't a hunger born from external influences or malicious intent. Rather, it was an intrinsic longing for something beyond the modest life he led. As the years passed, Avaris found himself yearning for more, more wealth, more power, and a taste of the forbidden fruits that lay beyond his grasp. This internal struggle manifested in subtle ways. Avaris, while still portraying an outward facade of innocence, began to explore the art of manipulation and deceit. He discovered that he had a knack for conning and tricking others, convincing them to willingly part with their valuables. Avaris reveled in the satisfaction of acquiring these treasures, and each successful endeavor fueled the ever-growing fire of his ambition. His actions, however, were not driven by malevolence or ill intentions. Instead, they stemmed from an intrinsic desire to escape the limitations of his modest upbringing. The allure of wealth and the power it promised became an intoxicating elixir that clouded Avaris's judgment and blurred the lines between right and wrong. It was during one of his deceptive exploits that Avaris first caught the attention of Obsidian X. The mysterious demon, observing from the shadows, recognized the potential for something greater within Avaris. Instead of condemning him for his actions, Obsidian X saw an opportunity to mold this budding greed into a force that could serve a higher purpose his purpose. One fateful day, as Avaris was conning a group of unsuspecting demons, Obsidian X revealed himself. The shadows seemed to dance around him as he offered Avaris a deal, a chance to transcend his current state and become something more. Avaris, enticed by the prospect of boundless wealth and power, accepted Obsidian X's proposition without fully comprehending the consequences that would follow. Under Obsidian X's guidance, Avaris underwent a transformation that exceeded his wildest dreams. He was given a second chance, not as a mere trickster, but as a formidable force within the netherworld. Avaris became one of Obsidian X's warlords, his innate skills of cunning and persuasion amplified by the influence of his new master. The once innocent demon, driven by the internal struggle between his past and present, embraced his newfound identity. Avaris, now armed with Obsidian X's dark powers after the Demon King was gone, continued his pursuit of wealth and power on a grander scale. His deceptive tactics evolved into calculated strategies, and his inset, eye-able hunger for more intensified. Within the towering walls of Ebonvault, Avaris, the warlord of greed, now ruled with an iron grip, his insatiable desires spiraling into a reign of terror and unchecked avarice. The once grand castle, adorned with opulent treasures, became a fortress of greed, every room echoing with the hollow whispers of discontent and the shadows of stolen wealth. Avaris's rule was characterized by a ruthless pursuit of anything that caught his fancy. He craved not just the material treasures, but the very essence of power that came with them. His minions, once loyal servants, were now instruments of his avaricious ambition, executing his every command without question or hesitation. The castle's grand halls, once filled with the vibrant energy of life, had transformed into darkened chambers where the spoils of Avaris' conquests lay in abundance. Precious gems, golden artifacts, even junks and treasures from countless realms adorned the walls and floors, each piece a testament to the warlord's insatiable hunger for more. Avaris's reign was marked by fear and coercion. Demons who dared to resist him faced the wrath of his corrupted might. The once thriving city surrounding the castle had been reduced to a ghost town, its inhabitants forced into servitude or driven away by the overwhelming oppression that now permeated the air. Avaris' insatiable desires seemed boundless, and he would take anything that caught his eye, regardless of its owner's protests. The warlord's tyranny knew no bounds, and the netherworld trembled under the weight of his unbridled greed. However, within the shadows of this dark reign, a lone figure emerged, a cunning devil with a plan to deceive the deceiver. Armed with a stone of mysterious power, this individual saw an opportunity to challenge Avaris's authority and bring an end to the reign of greed that had enslaved Ebonvault. The rogue, 
cloaked in shadows, approached Avaris under the guise of offering a rare and coveted gem. Avaris, always on the lookout for the next precious acquisition, welcomed the rogue into his domain without a hint of suspicion. Empowered by the corruption coursing through his veins, Avaris held an unwavering confidence that few could rival him in strength, with perhaps the exception of his fellow warlords. Chapter 774 A Walking Disaster For a moment, Mantis was ecstatic. He was so pleased with himself that he had managed to break through the thick steel wall, the wall that he would have just deemed impossible for him to break through. After seeing Rays do it again and again, though, he just had to give it a try. He knew his new body was stronger, and he had an idea from watching how Rays used his void pulse. He gathered the chi in the back of his hand and twisted his fist to put all of the chi in one point, exploding out. The results weren't what he had expected, but he tried it again, putting more chi to the back of his hand and unknowingly to himself, focusing so hard on those points, had caused his back to partly transform, as well as his hand, and with the extra power of his hybrid form, he smashed right through the thick steel, and in turn arrived on the other side, where there were countless people staring and looking at who had just entered. When looking up, Mantis could see the crowd of people looking at him, and he could feel their chi. These weren't amateurs, they were strong warriors. There are only two of them attacking. They must have gotten here by mistake, one of the warriors shouted. Focus on the shirtless one. A man pointed at Mantis. He just broke through the steel. We need to get rid of him first. Seeing as there were only two, and what Mantis had just done, the Bonham Society members were quick to act as they charged forward towards them. Do your best to deal with them. I need to observe a bit more, Rays said, as he realized that there was next to nothing in this room, and wondered why it existed in the first place. One of the warriors who were running toward the group stretched out their arm, and a sword skimmed Mantis's face. He was surprised but reacted in time and grabbed the man by the wrist. Window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag dot push, unit, type 6053 f 9 c 2 ID, PF463-1. He then pulled his arm in the air, and Mantis slammed his fist into his stomach, sending him away. Several warriors quickly came toward Mantis, who had no choice but to dodge and block a few hits, but there were so many attackers that he couldn't help but get hit in the stomach. As he punched another one away, he was left wide open, and a sword strike came right by his neck. Before the man could get any closer, though, a palm strike was delivered into his stomach, but it wasn't from Mantis's hand, it was from another. The man was sent flying and tumbling, bouncing off the floor several times in the other direction. You might need a little help. There seemed to be quite a lot of them, Rays had to admit, as he pulled out his sword. He swung it, striking against another, just with his key. He was winning out, and as he attacked a sword, it would bounce back. Some warriors even let go of their grip. Another started to change into what looked like a wolf-like beast. Before it could fully change, though, Rays got out his hand and fired away. Dark Pulse. The beam went out from his hand, hitting the beast man in the leg, immobilizing him, and sending him to the floor. While Rays struck the ground with his foot to stop the others with his chi as much as possible. Not only are there so many of them, but all of them seem to be quite resistant as well. Even if I strike them with my sword, some of their wounds are healing. If I hit them with my chi, they're getting back up as well. Rays noticed. Are they all beast-like beings like Merkel? At the same time, although Mantis was suffering from a lot of hits, he was giving a lot back. His wild fighting style made it hard for them to pin him down. Even as they used their beast-like skills, Mantis was able to strike with his hand. His fingers were hardened more than before, and his chi sharpened, making them like claws, allowing him to cut through any substance that was trying to pin him down. Still, there was just an odd feeling that he had been through this before, or almost as if the place was quite familiar to him. Yet the fee, ealing of familiarity, wasn't making him feel as if he was at home. Instead, it was making him feel a bit of a deeper hatred. The next person he kicked, he kicked with such vigor their body flipped several times in the air before landing. There's something I don't like about this place, 
and there's definitely something I don't like about you, Mantis said. Crouching down, Mantis then jumped from person to person, striking each of them, and grabbing onto a sword with his bare hand. He did so with such brute force that the sword snapped before he punched the man on the head, sending him to the ground. Because of how vicious Mantis was being, a lot more of the Bonham Society members were paying attention to him, rather than that of Ray's. Allowing for Ray's to take a more calm approach to those that he was facing. If anything, Ray's was somewhat practicing against his opponents, as he was trying to predict and see where their strikes were coming from, even if they were a hybrid. Ray's was also trying to gauge just how much energy he would need to try and beat these people down, and make sure they didn't get up again. After constantly running out of mana and chi, he didn't want to be in that situation again. He was sure in a facility like this, there would be more he would have to face, and it was the same for the rest of the light faction he would have to go against. It was then, through the same hole that Mantis had made, that Olag and his group had entered. Just what in the heck is going on? Olag said. Chapter 75 don't touch the kid. Oleg and his group were able to follow the trail of the intruders fairly easily. They could see the destruction they had left behind, and were going through the large holes created in the walls one by one. Eventually, they were led to the last hole in the wall, and they all knew what was coming ahead of them. I hope those guys weren't too rough on them. I wanted to get a beat down on these brave idiots myself, Oleg thought. When he stepped through the final hole in the wall into the training room, the sight wasn't what he had expected, and that was true in more ways than one. He was carefully looking at the situation. For one, he saw the man in a strange blazer, avoiding the strikes from three of the warriors. He was skillfully moving from side to side, and when an attack from a beast claw was about to hit his head, he had knocked it away with his sword. What had really caught his eye was the other young man, who was knocking away warriors coming at him. When large hybrids that had transformed were using their powerful limbs, the young man was still able to block the strike and hit the person far away. So many men had already been knocked down and hurt, at least twelve of them. This was one of the surprises, as for the other, it was who the two people they were fighting against. These guys, they aren't intruders, Olag said. That's the two that were brought in, they were both passed out. What happened for them to act like this waking up? As Oleg watched more and more, he was keeping an eye on Mantis of all people and was truly impressed by his power and skill. Window.pub future tag, what's window pub future tag, window pub future tag, push, unit 648C3C56 or B27 gref 9CE2, ID PF-46301. They said that the leader of the group and the one that brought them together was the person that was put to sleep. The way they were all coddling over the guy with white hair, I thought they were talking about him, but now I can see I made a big mistake. The strong one they were talking about must have been him, Oleg thought. You guys, deal with the one with white hair, Oleg ordered. Make sure to keep him alive, as for this one, I'll deal with him. Oleg then charged forward and continued to run. He saw Mantis ready to strike one of his men, and before he reached Oleg, grabbed right onto his fist. It was the first punch that had been stopped, and one that had been stopped so easily. Huh, where did you come from, Baldy? Mantis said, as he lifted his leg, ready to deliver a powerful kick to his side. Olag continued to hold onto Mantis's fist, and that's when his fists lit up, giving off a large explosion. It blew Mantis back, sending him rolling on the ground. More of his clothing was burnt off, and parts of his chest were hurt, but the white substance started to appear on his chest, and his wounds were beginning to heal up. That hurt quite a bit. Was that a chi explosion? Mantis thought. Chi was energy in the body, but chi was always used to reinforce or used to go out of one's body in a controlled manner. However, everyone knew if one wasn't careful with the way they used chi, it could do more harm to the body than good. One of these things was chi exploding in one's body, and it almost felt like his opponent had done that on purpose. As the smoke started to clear, Olag was seen walking over. The white substance was covering his entire arm from his elbow. It appeared as if it was growing back in place. So, you're a hybrid as well, 
it's no wonder you are so strong, and a white-colored one like me of all things. Well, you should know that I'm the strongest white-colored hybrid alive. I was going to bring you alive, but I didn't realize you were such a feisty one. Now that I know you're a white hybrid, at least I know you won't die as easily. Olag claimed as he ran in again. When Olag charged forward, he threw out several punches. He was fast, just as fast as Mantis, who managed to block all the hits. But when Mantis went to deliver an attack of his own, sending a kick out, his leg was carefully grabbed again, and Olag's hand could be seen lighting up. Fuck! Mantis could be heard shouting before the explosion went off again and sent him skidding across the floor. However, Mantis was quick on his feet, and this time when he recovered, he had gotten down on all fours into a crouching position. I'm the Black Tiger. I'm not just anybody, and I'm not going to fall here. Mantis exclaimed as he started to run forward and jumped from side to side, picking up an immense amount of speed. If he was able to do the same as what he had done before, if he could burst a hole right through this man like he had done with the wall, then the person in his way would be done for. With a mighty leap, he jumped in, remembering the feeling. Out from his back, a large wing appeared and sent him propelling forward, and Mantis threw out his claw-like fist, breaking right through Olag's stomach. Mantis could see his hand on the other side, and the body had reached all the way up to his shoulder. How's that? Mantis asked with a smile. When he went to look up above him, though, instead, he could see the smile of Olag. It's going to take a lot more than that to kill me, and now I have you right where I want you, Olag said with his hand inching towards Mantis's face. Rays, even with the new enemies that were on him, had continuously been watching Mantis and seeing what was about to happen, he felt like he had no choice. He lifted his hand up, and dark magic started to swirl around his hand, and then condensed inward. Dark push, Rays said, and out from his hand, the dark energy pulsed out in a wave. It hit all of the warriors that were near him, picking them off their feet and pushing them out, causing them to all fall to the floor. The sound of multiple people grunting in pain and falling to the floor had caught Olag's attention. As he looked at the other person, he could see all of his fallen allies. How did he? I kinda like that kid, Ray said. So it looks like I can't plant play around anymore, and I'm going to have to get rid of you all. Chapter 776. I'm Keeping You Alive As the vice leader of the Bonum Society, Olag had been in numerous situations. Not only was he strong, but he had a lot of experience dealing with matters and had been put in plenty of situations where he needed to make quick, snap decisions. When he entered the training room, he thought a few things. Sure, the young man with a scar across his chest was strong, but he could take him on. Even when he was going up against Reyes's allies, he was only doing so to see if they were strong enough to trust with the rest of the Bonum Society members. In truth, he thought that he might be able to go up against the man known as Zahn a bit more, and bring out what he wanted from him, but decided it was pointless in the end. Instead, this young person seemed a lot more fun to deal with. Oleg was ready to bring out of this young person what everyone saw in him, including that of Amir. While fighting, Although Olag was having a lot of fun, there was a thought that crept into the back of his mind constantly. Was this person really strong enough to go up against Merkel, the dark faction leader, and the one in charge of the academy? This was the main thought that was going through Olag's head as Mantis's fist had penetrated his stomach. The person in front of him was strong, but too naive. There was still a chance for him to show more, which was why Olag was ready to push him further. That was until he heard the sound of several of his men groaning and several thuds as if something heavy had hit the floor. When looking up, Olag could see the man in the blazer, standing there, and all of his men on the floor. Not only were the stronger individuals of the Bonum Society on the floor, but Olag's personal party, the ones he would go out with, were also defeated. There were around ten or so others that had fallen on the floor as well. They all were defeated? Olag said, but that's impossible. Oleg was strong, and Amir was also strong, but so were many members of the Bonum Society. The feat that this person had just accomplished wasn't something that the two of them could do, at least not so quickly and effortlessly. 
When looking at the white-haired man, there wasn't a single mark on him, and that's when a thought crossed his mind. Window about pub future tag equals window at pub future tag. Window pub future tag dot push unit six four eight C three C five six zero over B three two seven to three F nine C two E two IDPF four six three D O. Did I get the wrong one? Is the person that's right next to me right now not the one they were talking about? Looking up, Olag could then see the white-haired warrior walking towards him calmly with his sword by his side. I would advise you to get away from that young man, Ray said as he lifted his sword and then swung it down. A red slash appeared through the air and came out at an incredible speed. Olag had no choice but to pull himself away from Mantis and move to the side. No longer was he even focused on Mantis, but instead on his own heart rate that was beating incredibly fast. Looking at the attack that had just missed him, Olag could see a large indent that had been made across the floor and had even cut part of the wall. That attack was so fast, and he attacked from so far away as well, Olag thought. He cut through the steel with it. I might be going crazy, but it didn't feel like he used much chi either. The panic was starting to set in, but behind that panic, there was a creepy, hidden smile. This was more like it. This was more along the lines of what he expected someone to be like, a person that was able to beat Merkel, a person that was to be the head of the dark faction. I want to test him a bit more. I've only seen a single attack, and I didn't even see what he did to the others. The good thing is, it appears as if they're still alive, but I want to see it. I want to see what else he can do before I clear up this misunderstanding, Olag thought. It was then that Ray started to swing his sword again and again, performing the Crimson Slash multiple times. Olag quickly needed to move out of the way to avoid the attack. S. He could see that each attack was just as dangerous as the last, tearing and ripping through the metal in the area. The other warriors that had come with him weren't safe either, as all of them were moving away from the attacks that were tearing up the place. Just how long can he keep this up for? Olag thought, but strangely, he started to notice something. Now the attacks weren't close to hitting him, and it was the same for the others that were behind him. Then suddenly, the red crimson slashes had stopped. Olag looked at where he was standing, the others that were running behind him were out of breath, and as for the ones that were on the floor, they were the ones part of his group, part of those that had attacked Rays. It was then that Olag realized a little too late that every one of them was on one side of the room, while the white-haired student was now next to his ally. Darkness started to come out from Rays's arm and was beginning to surround the sword. It covered it from top to bottom until the entire sword was covered black an eclipsed sword. You, you missed us on purpose. You planned all of this to put us all in one place, Olag asked. I know. I was the one that told you all to get away from him, Reyes said as he raised his sword above his head. But that was the only thing that was keeping you guys alive. 